Hey guys, welcome to the Bible study. I'm happy to have you all here. I hope you appreciated uh, the calming music in the intro. I wanted to have a calming day today. Um, our two chapters are following right along with our study through uh, the Bible. Today we're in 1 Kings 15 and 16. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. In the beginning, we've got somebody who does the right thing but fails to do some things. And in the next chapter, we've got somebody who outright does all the wrong things. But before we get into all that, let's do what we came here to do. I love you guys. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here. But let's go and worship the Lord together.
Dear God, God, thank you for today, and thank you for all the wonderful things you're doing in our life and around the world. Lord, I pray that you forgive us of our sins and help us to come together in this time and honor and worship and glorify you. Lord, I pray that you give us attentive hearts and attentive minds so that we can hear and understand what your word is saying to us today. Help us to be focused on you and have a heart that's hungry to do things that glorify you. We praise you in these things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So today we are in 2 Kings 15 and 16. Let's get into it. Uzziah, son of Amaziah, began to rule over Judah in the 27th year of the reign of King Jeroboam the second of Israel. Again, the thing with names, I just can't get down with people naming their children after these people. He was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother was Jecoliah from Jerusalem. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight just as his father Amaziah had done. Amaziah. Amaziah had done. But he did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. The Lord struck the king with leprosy, which lasted until the day he died. He lived in isolation in a separate house. The king's son Jotham was put in charge of the royal palace, and he governed the people of the land. The rest of the events in Uzziah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Uzziah died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David, and his son Jotham became the next king. Zechariah, son of Jeroboam II, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria six months. Short. Zechariah did what was evil in the Lord's sight, as his ancestors had done. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. Then Shul... Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against Zechariah, assassinated him in public, and became the next king. The rest of the events in Zechariah's reign are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. 
So the Lord's message to Jehu became true. Your descendants will be kings of Israel down to the fourth generation. Shalom, son of Jabesh, began to rule over Israel in the 39th year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. Shalom reigned in Samaria only one month. Then Menahem, son of Gadi, went to, went to Samaria from Terza and assassinated him, and he became the next king. The rest of the events in Shalom's reign, including his conspiracy, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. At that time, Manahem destroyed the town of Tapua and all the surrounding countryside as far as Terza. Because its citizens refused to surrender the town, he killed the entire population and ripped open the pregnant women. Oh man, it's rough. Menahem, son of God, he began to rule over Israel in the 39th year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 10 years. But Menahem did what was evil in the Lord's sight. During his entire reign, he refused to turn from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had led Israel to commit. Then King Tiglath Pil Pilazir, Pelasur of Assyria invaded the land, but Menahem paid him 37 tons of silver to gain his support in tightening his grip on royal power. Menahem extorted the money from the rich of Israel, demanding that each of them pay 50 pieces of silver to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned from attacking Israel and did not stay in the land. The rest of the events in Menahem's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Menahem died, his son Pekahiah became the next king. Pekahiah, son of Menahem, began to rule over Israel in the 50th year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but Pekahiah did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam led Israel to commit. Then Pekah, son of Ramalahiah, Ramaliah, Remaliah, the commander of the Pekahiah's commander of Pekahiah's army conspired against him. With 50 men from Gilead, Pekah assassinated the king along with Argob and Arai in the citadel of the palace of Samaria, and Pekah reigned in his place. The rest of the events in Pekahiah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Pekah, son of Remaliah, began to rule over Israel in the 52nd year of King Uzziah's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 20 years, but Pekah did what was evil in the Lord's sight. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nabat, had led Israel to commit. During Pekah's reign, King Tiglath Pilazir of Assyria attacked Israel again, and he captured the towns of Ijan, Abel Beth Maka, Genoa, Kadesh, and Hazor. He also conquered the regions of Gilead, Galilee, and all of Naphtali, and he took the people of Assyria as captives. Took the people to Assyria as captives. Then Hoshea, son of Ella, conspired against Pekah and assassinated him. He began to rule over Israel in the twentieth year of Jotham, son of of Uzziah. The rest of the events in Pekah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Jotham, son of Uzziah, began to rule over Judah in the second year of King Pekah's reign in Israel. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. He did everything his father Uzziah had done, but he did not destroy the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. He rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. The rest of the events in Jotham's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. In those days, the Lord began to sing, send King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah of, Is of Israel to attack Judah. When Jotham died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David, and his son Ahaz became the next king. Alright, let's hear about Ahaz. Oh. Sorry, guys. I don't know why this happens every single time. It's kind of frustrating, but, you know, it's okay. Not that big a deal. 
Ahaz, son of Jotham, began to rule over Judah in the 17th year of King Pekah's reign in Israel. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. He did not do what was pleasing in the sight of the Lord his God and his ancestor as his ancestor David had done. Instead, he followed the example of the kings of Israel, even sacrificing his own son in the fire. In this way, he followed the detestable practices of the pagan nations the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense at the pagan shrines and on the hills and under every green tree. Then King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah of Israel came up to attack Jerusalem. They besieged Ahaz, but could not conquer him. At that time, the king of Edom recovered the town of Elath from Edom. For Edom, he drove out the people of Judah and sent Edomites to live there, as they do to this day. King Ahaz sent messengers to King Tiglath Pileser of Assyria with this message: "I am your servant and your vassal." Come up and rescue me from the attacking armies of Aram and, Ir and Israel, Aram and Israel. Then Ahaz took the silver and gold from the temple of the Lord and the palace treasury and sent it as payment to the Assyrian king. So the king of Assyria attacked the Aramean, Aramean capital of Damascus and led its population away as captives, resettling them in Kerr. He also killed King Rezin. King Ahaz then went to Damascus to meet with King tiglath pileser of Assyria. While he was there, he took special note of the altar. Then he sent a model of the altar to Uriah the priest, along with its design in full detail. Uriah followed the king's instruction and built an altar just like it. Not an altar of the Lord, those are to be made out of natural stone. Uh, moving on. When the king returned, he inspected the altar and made offerings on it. Probably not to God. He presented a burnt offering and a grain offering. I guess it was to God. He poured out a liquid offering and he sprinkled the blood of the peace offerings on the altar. Then King Ahaz removed the old bronze altar from its place in front of the Lord's temple between the entrance and the new altar and placed it on the north side of the new altar. He told Uriah the priest, use the new altar for morning sacrifices of burnt offering, the evening grain offering, the king's burnt offering and grain offering, and the burnt offerings of all the people, as well as their grain offerings and liquid offerings. Sprinkle the blood from all the burnt offerings and sacrifices on the new altar. The bronze altar will be for my personal use only. Uriah the priest did just as King Ahaz commanded him. Then the king removed the side panels and basins from the portable water carts. He also removed the great bronze basin called the sea from the backs of the bronze oxen and placed it on the stone pavement in deference to, in dif, deference to the king of Assyria. He also removed the canopy that had been constructed inside the palace for use on the Sabbath day as well as the king's outer entrance to the temple of the Lord. The rest of the events in Ahaz's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Ahaz died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Hezekiah became the next king. Here in a couple chapters, this whole temple ain't going to be there. But guys, that's our reading for today. So if there's anything that we can take from this, it's probably that God has all authority. He raises people up and he takes them down. He is the author of life. So, it's something important for us to know. Our next breath is not guaranteed. And any success, trial, or tribulation that happens, the best thing we can do is live a life that brings glory to God. I mentioned earlier in one of the previous live streams, who I follow is who they follow when they follow me. Get it? But I love you guys. There's not really a whole lot of big, groundbreaking uh, things going on here. It's just a tale of Israel just not doing what they need to do. And this is just going to happen for a few chapters. And we're just going to move a long time. And uh, you'll be interested to see what happens next. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.